Hello, uh, this is uh, November Oscar to Charlie Whiskey again. With a quick follow up to my 9232 MFJ Loop Tuner review. I did two videos where I covered uh, the reception qualities of this uh, Loop Tuner, and today I have it hooked up to this old fence again. And um, I'm using the 10 foot refrigeration soft copper tube that I uh, bought from Lowe's, uh, cost about $10, and it is securely attached to the loop tuner. I drilled a couple of holes in there, so I think we're making good contact, uh, which is important, especially when you try to transmit through uh, these loop antennas. Um, I have it hooked up to my KX2, and what I will do is um, prep my uh, um, frequency, uh, tune the antenna, and make a few calls on PSK31, then we'll see if we get any hits on that PSK reporter. So we'll get started. Okay, I have the radio tuned up to 1407 and um, I did a quick uh, tuning cycle on the MFJ loop and uh, my SWR came up to about uh, 1.4 and that's about as, as good as, uh, uh, as I can uh, get out of it and it's very sensitive to uh, my hand being there and adjusting um, uh, the two control knobs. Anyway, so I do have that and it will take me another minute to hook up uh, the audio out of my uh, KX2 transceiver and connect it to a laptop. Okay, uh, if you can see through all the reflections that I have here, uh, I have pretty good, I would say decent, uh, reading of the PSK31 band on 20 meters. It is about 11 a.m. Uh, here in the morning. And um, this is uh, reception-wise what we're getting, uh, a couple of distinct signals. Uh, I will make a few adjustments and then I will call a few CQs. Uh, if I get any answers, I will proceed with the uh, QSO. And eventually, in about 15 minutes, uh, I will take a look at the PSK reporter and see if my signal was detected by any of the receiving stations. Now I will apply a little bit of carrier just to see what my SWR is, uh, looks like. And looks pretty good around one and a half. Um, let's see uh, if we can proceed with uh, uh, a few CQs and uh, uh, just uh, get a general idea of what we can hear on the band. Uh, where are we reception-wise? Uh, I uh, was able to receive stations from um, different parts of the US and I could also see a couple of stations from Italy and uh, Spain which is uh, pretty good for this time of the day, uh, right around noon, 11.30. Um, I will give it another try uh, as far as transmission. I pointed the antenna, the antenna was pointed east-west which is not a very good um, direction for me, uh, being located in Florida. So I think north-south will give me a much better exposure. And I just did that and I will call a few CQs. Okay, this is an O2CW again. Where are we after this entire test? I called a bunch of CQs with uh, different north-south and east-west exposure of the loop antenna. And uh, I only got two hits which is a lot less than I normally get with my 5 watts and the uh, uh, Elecraft KX2. What is my lesson learned from this exercise? Well, if I were to head out to the park right now and I had a choice between the, uh, this loop antenna and my uh, telescopic extending vertical, I would go with the vertical because it is a very predictable antenna. I extend it, it takes me two minutes to uh, deploy it and I know what I will uh, get out of it. With this antenna I spend quite some time tinkering, adjusting and um, that's not my preference. I'd rather be uh, using the radio than uh, keep adjusting and readjusting the antenna and trying to find a, a good, uh, good orientation. Keep in mind that this is the MFJ9232. It is a pocket size portable loop tuner. Uh, it is not the same as the commercial, um, a lot more expensive loop antennas that you can buy. The ones that come in a bag, that uh, um, that are made, made for field use. So th they really would not be a fair comparison, uh, this, uh, this little uh, pocket tuner and uh, those fancier um, pieces of equipment that use uh, better capacitors, uh, better elements that are tested and uh, they're not homemade uh, as mine is. Uh, but this is my quick test. 
I wanted to explore this 9232 pocket tuner as, as an option uh, as, to take it um, in somewhere in field conditions and use it. It is usable. I, I, I would uh, bring it and I will take it. But like I said, if I had a choice, I will take that, uh, uh, that uh, vertical antenna anytime, a collapsible vertical, especially if you have a vertical that you can extend to natural quarter size um, length such as for 20 meters uh, or, or, or higher frequencies, uh, you, you're probably looking at uh, very good predictable results. And uh, the loop will do its job, but it will require a little bit of effort and a little bit of work. So this is uh, what I had to uh, share regarding the 9232 pocket loop tuner. It's uh, model MFJ9232. And uh, I do have two more videos related to its reception qualities. Reception wise, I'm, I'm getting uh, very good signals from it. Uh, I can tell because on PSK31, I was getting, um, I was receiving signals from Europe at uh, 12 noon here, local time. And uh, you really need to uh, be able to um, point your antenna in the right direction and have a, a decent quality antenna in order to do that. That's from my past experience. Um, getting these 20 meter uh, signals from uh, from Europe uh, at 12 noon. Uh, transmission wise, this is where you can get trickier, and that's uh, true for uh, a lot of other uh, other antennas as well. Most of the reviews that you will see for for different antennas, they're uh, mostly centered around um, the reception qualities of the antenna. Thinking that um, if you can receive well with the antenna. Uh, even if uh, transmission-wise it's not perfect, if you pump uh, five, six hundred watts into it, uh, it, it will do a good job. Uh, now, if it's for a field and the field use, then um, uh, this game uh, is no longer applicable. Well, thank you for uh, checking out this uh, quick review of the 9232 uh, Pocket uh, Loop uh, Tuner from uh, MFJ. Uh, thank you. This is NO2CW73.